Listen, you know what time it is. It's time for another episode of your favorite new podcast entitled We Hate You Internet! That See, is we just we just switched hats. You know what I'm saying? We, we to <laughs> legal have put on the business management. Yeah, so I saw that. No, but a lot of <laughs> um, kind of just to like add on to that a little bit. A lot of the things that we see on the internet are planned. Like there was a, there are two musicians that I can think of. I just can't remember their names, but for a while they had released like a sound, and it was supposed to be kind of just this person just playing a song. And it came out later that 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 was actually planned. Like the PR people had had tried to make it seem like, oh, it's just someone making music in their room. But this was an actual artist and they planned it all. It was made to seem like, you know, down to earth. It's just a regular person, but it wasn't. And then people started using that sound. And eventually the song, you know, was extremely popular. Uh, But that that's happened before. A lot of it is is. Oh, most of it is. Yeah. It's not by happens. Yeah. You know, it's the Internet. The what we digest is very curated. Yes. Yeah. It's really it's it's. (laughs) You know, like I said, we 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 have the show. We hate you, internet, and we you know we have the whole sound thing. That's also planned. We hate you, internet. <laughs> I, mean, I, I thought about, I was in my room. Thing, I was like, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but um, you know, the internet is great. It's a great tool. We say this all the time. We always try to make sure that it's balanced so people understand. It's not a, a, a genuine hate for the internet. It's more sarcasm than anything else. But like, but it, it, man, the, the points that are being brought out it, is so important to uh, the mental health of our society because we consume social media and like it, it, I, 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 I remember I was having a conversation with somebody and I was like um, you know 50 years ago 50 years ago whatever TV you know people watch things on TV but there were and, and they watch it as if it was real but there was a sense of understanding that this is just this is fictional mm-hmm. you you run into one of these people like they're an actor you 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 had the sense that this is not you 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 were in, in, engulfed in it. You know what I mean. You were enveloped in it. You were uh, engaged, but there was a sense of understanding that this is not actually real. Yeah, you know this is I mean? separate from right. me. indeed. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like uh, JJ don't actually. You know what I mean? Like he don't actually live in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean? Penny didn't really fall down. Yeah, that exactly. <laughs> and her mom didn't really burn her with the iron. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going back, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's also because people have like their phone attached to their hip. Like you cannot. A lot of people can't function without their phone with them. You know, they panic and they have to go back home and get it, or or they genuinely use their phone the entire day. And I think having that screen attached to you all the time. Versus what it was years ago where you'd go home and turn on the TV to just relax. And, you know, we had the flip phones or, you know, my time razors and stuff mm-hmm. like that. <laughs> like it, it's different. And now like Yucks. we <laughs> now we we can see anything at any point in right. time about anyone. Well, we think we know these people. Yeah. That's right. The point that I mean, you think you think, you know, these people and also to kind of get back on when the the legal aspect of it, you know, one thing that is becoming a huge um, issue or point that is really evolving in the area of law is digital assets and mm. what happens in your estate plan with these digital oh, wow. assets. So when creatives die or when you yeah. pass away, mm-hmm. who owns your passwords? How can you get your passwords? Uh, There are even huge issues between families. If someone passes away, maybe the parents want to take the Facebook Mm -hmm. page down and maybe the spouse wants it to stay up as a memorial page. Mm -hmm. Who decides what happens to this information? And is it taken down? Does it become a memorial Mm -hmm. page? Can people repost images of you when you were, I mean, who goes in and is able to clean up the page because now you are no longer Mm -hmm longer living anymore and maybe they want to preserve just certain images of you know your life and not have anything there well how are you planning for that in your digital asset planning and that is such a big deal and wow. you know let's not even start to attach monetize things to those digital assets mm-hmm. it becomes a huge issue that we have to to think about and so i know the state bar has issued language and um, things that go into wills that really talk about what's covered under 
digital assets and who do you want to receive them? So if you want to go to Facebook to get a password, you have to submit your um, letters of administration mm -hmm. or letters testamentary and a copy of the will that states that you have rights to their digital assets. Powerful, that is so, I was just mm. talking to my brother about that because he, uh, he went to Columbia not too long ago and he's like, I'm giving you permission. He's like, I'm gonna print you out all this info. He's like, if anything happens, you, I want you to be the person to have access to all this, all my stuff. And then he goes, you know how serious like this all is? He said that, and I don't know if this is true, but he said if uh, a police officer came to your home and had a warrant to go through your home, they would need a completely different warrant to go through your cell phone, that that's a whole different thing, that it has nothing to do with them searching your home. So they don't have the right to actually go into your phone and look for anything in there that they would have to go for a different process in regards to that. Now, again, I don't know if that's true or not, but I just think that that just shows if it is, that just shows like the the depth and how enormous that is, you know, like. Well, think about when people go missing, right? The yeah. first thing that people say is go through their phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go through their phone. Let's see what, you know, what where they've been, what yeah. they've been doing. Who they've been and talking it's to. very difficult. You know, Facebook is, they were under huge scrutiny for giving away yeah. in this trafficking mm -hmm. case, um, messenger, messenger data uh -huh. that yeah. involved younger girls speaking to because for them they're saying the premise of our entire sort of um promise to our community is that these contents this communication is going to be protected yeah. well as a community member how does that apply to yeah. young people yeah. and things that violate the community standards so it is an evolving standard but when it comes to getting the fbi involved getting mm -hmm. department of justice involved what do those warrants cover? And yeah. that you're absolutely right. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> like I said, man, <laughs> you see, we, we're adjusting so much, so much. You know, yeah. Right? My pocket's almost full. I got to try to find some more space. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, like I said, I mean, I, I, I can't reiterate it enough. You know what I mean? Like um, just how deep this situation, like this reality that we're living in, is you know what i mean like we engage in this stuff every day but we really don't understand how deep this and the reality is that like you mentioned multiple times it's constantly evolving because all this all this stuff is new all these right. issues are new uh, they're happening in real time and i think that and like so that's one of the things that we really try to point out on a platform is is to, to, for people to be aware of the reality of the society that we're living in the reality of the technology that you have in your pocket you know um you know, the point that I was making that we're going to move on earlier about television. You you knew that it was it was it wasn't real. But on your phone, you, you think that this a real person. You don't know that this like you said, it's an actor sitting there playing strumming this guitar. You think that's just a regular person in the room. They're actually an artist. Uh, they're trying to promote something. And, and so and, and the reason why I think that that's so important is so that people, like I said, live in reality. And when they see this information, or they see this content that they that they are aware that everything that you see is not real. Mm -hmm. It's like I said, when you watch a movie, you know that that guy didn't jump fifty foot over a carrot, you know, on on a on a on a, a horse drawn carriage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like that looks a little fake. <laughs> Just a little. Yeah, 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 man. And all of a sudden, the horses sprout wings like Pegasus. They fly. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I, I may not want to try that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but when you, like I said, when you're watching stuff, like, and it, it's made to look like it's a, just a regular scene, but people are inspired by that and they start chasing those things. They think, well, I, I could play. I should play in my room. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when you don't get the same traction, they, they got a thousand, they got a hundred thousand likes. All this, but this stuff is paid for. All this stuff is right. is is by is is, is well, branded. They know stuff. the optimal time to post, and they know you know mm -hmm. they're handling it like a business. You just yeah. woke up one day and, man, and yeah. decided that this is what you want to do for likes and attention. And yeah. also, let's not talk about the fact that how long it takes for the human brain to really develop. And mm -hmm. the number one consumers of social media and these things are young people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that is okay. so true. Wow. We're going to move on because I'll be, I'll be harping. You know what I'm saying? It, it, like I said, it's just for, for the mental health aspect of it. That's what, that's the point that I'm making. It's just like, you have to understand that this stuff is not what you think it is. Phone mm -hmm. should be, I, I do believe that 
children under the age of 13 should only have phones for contacting people. Yeah. I think that the the content is too much for them I and think it's, it's not being regulated. Yeah. I, I, I would agree. I'm sure that there are some young viewers that are watching that hate that statement. Oh, yeah. My, <laughs> yeah. my, son, my son hates yeah, it. Yeah, he'd be like, if he going to go watch this episode, his friends are going to be like, look at him like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it kind of ties into what we were talking about way in the beginning with like the terms and conditions. You need the time. You need to allow yourself to actually read through these things. Yes. You need to make sure you're putting that effort forward. The same with like deciphering content, like what is real, what's not. Children don't have that. No. Like they don't have the ability to agree. They don't have the ability to understand what they're agreeing to. And I mean, just to kind of tie it all together, but I think it requires energy above all and above right. anything else. It requires energy and prioritizing what's important to you. And if this is important to you, then you should put that energy forward. But straight up, okay. Moving on, because I'm mm. going to move on. I want I want to talk about real fast um, AI, mm. right? Uh, with 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 the you know explosion of of AI creation, you know AI generated images, mm. uh, music all these things that are being created by AI. Uh, it's a really interesting question. I was had, I, I thought to myself, like who is liable or who is responsible if, a, if an individual, because an individual may put a prompt into AI, but then AI is the one who actually creates the image or whatever it is uh, that is created. So in that case, who would be liable if, if there was some type of legal issue? Well, it, it's not AI, right? Because who's AI? You know, <laughs> they, AI. they're not necessarily liable. Uh, this has become a huge thing, especially in like regulated industries. So when I say regulated industries, I'm talking about like the legal profession mm -hmm. or with CPAs. Um, what happens not just with the output that is produced by AI, but also where is the information that you put in going? Mm. So if I'm working on something that that is confidential. I've learned this through attorney client privilege mm -hmm. and I put it into AI and I might even say something like, please edit this letter to ensure that I'm using an active voice in the entire, you know, five page mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, they edit it. They're making it clean. It's nice. It's wonderfully edited. What happens to that information mm -hmm. that was placed into the the internet or into AI. Now, when other people are using AI, is it pulling from that data? This, you know, data that really is protected by attorney client privilege, mm -hmm. that's work product. Mm -hmm. And so that is why, you know, we have been instructed there, well, there are AI legal databases that say, look, we will pull things, but once you put stuff in, it stays and it's protected. Those things are like $3,000 a month, right? Good. So they're very expensive, but they are protected. So the people that do have access to them right now are very large law firms or people that are doing lots of like international work where they can invest the money in. They likely have a team of lawyers that they're using to test this out on. Mm -hmm. the, the problem becomes when you are putting this information in um, and, and you, you're not sure what happens to it. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you are going to be responsible for everything. I have clients that work in marketing and we have revised their um, retainer agreements or their representation agreements to say, hey, we are going to use technology, artificial intelligence and other um, other innovative um, techniques to help us to uh, perform data to be more effective, to save you money. But the final product will be reviewed and certified by a human being. Mm -hmm. Right. So that lets them know that you, they're staying ahead of with technology. They're mm -hmm. going to use these things. But at the end, it is our promise that we are going to look over every single thing and be sure that what we are uh, putting out and saying is a representation of your company, that it is factual and it's been reviewed by a real person. Mm -hmm. And that would be what I would encourage if you're using AI, you're using these things in your business, you know, get in front of it. Let your clients know that you're going to use it, but also have some type of checklist you know, especially if you're scaling your business, you're not the one doing it. So you're delegating these tasks. You know, we like to hire these young, really smart, you know, you young know, people. Mm -hmm. They know how to use the Internet. Maybe they're not coming into the office. 
well, how are you showing them how to use this? Are you creating compliance documents, checklist documents, so that if it goes out, that it's double, triple checked for efficiency, for accuracy as well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a very powerful thing. And that kind of coincides with a lot of the points that we've been making on the platform from the beginning. Uh, the tools are great and they should be utilized, uh, but you don't want to to let the tools become a handicap to you. Mm -hmm. And what you're describing basically uh, is the utilization of the tool, but also um, the proficiency of the mind. Because obviously you need to still be in tune with the, with, with, uh, the legal requirements, uh, various stipulations and things, whatever it is that you're dealing with, you need to be, uh, you need to be well versed in those things so that you can verify the information that this tool is producing. And I think like I said, that's a, I really appreciate you pointing that out because, uh, like I said, that's what this thing is all about. Right. You know what I mean? Like making sure don't 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 give your intellect and your ability and uh, your like to technology you know what i mean because like i said the addiction to convenience is so easy so then you stop taking the time to learn these things to brush up on this to 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 educate yourself in this area whatever the case may be you say oh well, hey i got it but like man it's, it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be the death maybe not literally but you know what i mean metaphorically of a lot of people uh because they don't they won't stay human that's what we always talk about right. hashtag stay human but like that's the idea you know what i mean like uh, staying engaged, stay um, evolving, learning, developing, growing. Don't just surrender all those things to, you know, technology. Like you say, it, it'd be a bad thing for you from a professional perspective oh, as well absolutely. as a personal one. You know? I mean, also morally. I mean, I think there is a. I know that there is a difference between you saying write a three-page paper that deals with X, Y, and Z. Uh, as opposed to you writing the paper, you doing the research, editing, and then putting it in AI to say, edit the paper to ensure consistency. And, you know, I mean, you're not asking them to research data. You're not asking them. There are a lot of things that I write. And sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, I feel like I'm hitting a wall in being sure that the point I'm trying to get across is there. So I might put it into chat GPT or something just to edit it for consistency, for conciseness, mm -hmm. but it's still getting the three points out that I wanted to say. Now, if there was anything that I was submitting to a court, I would, I would never submit things that to a court that have even gone into chat GPT mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ever. I just would not, um, you know, I, 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 you know, that's public record that becomes something that is verified. I mm -hmm. just though I do think that there are some things that you should not use chat GPT for. I think that it's really just for conciseness research, mm -hmm. maybe to help you get started. Maybe you're researching something and you don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. What are the 10 things I should do if I visit, you know, China, mm -hmm. 10 places I should go. OK, it's maybe we'll give you 10 places. So then where do you do? You go and you research those things on mm -hmm. your own. Um, individuals who want it to do the job for them, they're always going to fall short. Short. Mm hmm. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's the reason why I went to the bio, so you understand what you did. Who, who you talking to? And who talking to you? <laughs> All right, real fast. We got about we got a um, couple minutes left. Uh, I wanted to kind of go toward the personal side of things. Um, one of the things that I really want to talk to you about specifically, right? Um, you know, we live in a time, uh, um, and I have a daughter. This is what kind of inspired this. Uh, we live in a time where women have a lot of aspirations, rightfully so. They have intellect and ability. They want to seek uh, um, uh, excellence in their profession, things of that nature. Uh, and But one of the things that I always talk to my daughter about, I talk about, talk to her about all those things, but then I also talk to her about having a family and helping her to understand that there that is a totally different skill set. Uh, having a family and, and, and being able to operate in that space and be successful in that space may be a little bit different than operating in your profession. Uh, and if you could, if, uh, and I would like to ask, as, as a person who's making that balance, right, like what is, what is your thoughts, what are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I mean, so my family definitely raised me to be very um, independent and strong willed <laughs> and, and a hard worker. I, mean, I grew up seeing all the women in my family work very hard. My, I was raised by my grandmother. When we would get up for school, she was already gone to work, but mm -hmm. all of our food was already cooked, you know, just things that I would never be able to do. I mean, she was just amazing, Super right? Woman. Superwoman. <laughs> uh, and so, what I do think is, um, I think that we have to talk to our girls and our boys about being able to be leaders, to be headstrong, to focus on their individuals. I also think that we just have to talk to them about village and relationship building, right? Because mm -hmm. I do think that families look very different. You know, I feel like there is this hyper focus mm -hmm. right now on just creating a family with like you, your partner, your kids, your dog, you know, like mm -hmm. almost going go, reverting back to this sort of like beautiful little white picket fence family yeah. and not really focusing on extended family and village and cousins and all of that. And I think that if we bring all of our children, all of, you know, the next generation and help them to focus on something that's larger than themselves, that will always come, you know, modeling behavior of showing up for your family, yeah. showing up for your partner, mm -hmm. showing up for, um, those are all important, but I, I really think that your daughter, my daughter, they will be better if they know that there is something larger than themselves and they will practice flexing those skills of what it takes to be a good partner in a marriage or um, in a relationship by understanding what it takes to be a person that's a part of a larger village, mm -hmm. a part of a tribe, a part of a larger family. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just think that we have gotten to being very selfish, like we're a very selfish society right yes, now. Indeed. Mainly because everyone feels like they just have to be a boss, babe, you know, uh, bad this by 21 years old. You have to have, you know, designer purses at 21. If you haven't, if you don't have a passport at 21, you know, you're not living. I, I think that those standards are like, it's great. Yeah. I love that people are traveling more and seeing things outside of the United States. Um, but I, 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 I do think that if we helped um, our daughters and helped ourselves to understand that we are part of something larger. We're modeling behavior that um, breeds collaboration, that breeds um, listening, that breeds not, you know, when we talk about being a leader, sometimes you're not being a good leader means stepping back and letting someone else lead the way or do the talking or do. And those are all skills that are applicable during a marriage, but they're applicable in any good relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think that usually um, if you are not good at other relationships, it's probably going to spill over into other aspects. So helping them to build um, good village relationships. I think that that is really the key. Yeah. I, I really like what you said. I, I think that sometimes too, what, what's, what's happening currently. Cause I, I, for a long time, I kind of still do. I always would say that I don't know if I want children, you know, and that's not from, from a negative sense, but, um, and I know a lot of young women feel that way right now. I know that's a big thing. Um, and as you're, as you both are talking, I think one thing that like, I guess just I'm picking up from it is when we're creating a family, when we're cre creating these connections and strengthening them, I, I guess making sure that your perspective on this is not sourced from like trauma mm -hmm. or negative experience is important. It's, it's important to create this with the mind of what you want, not what you've experienced, you know, like you would like a strong family unit. You mm -hmm. want trust. You want reliability. You want love. Sourcing your vision uh, around that instead of like, oh, well, you know, 
these men are no good or, <laughs> or, you know, I want the designer bag or that's all sourced from trauma. That's sourced because, you know, you, you want you lack- financial stability and you lack it right now, mm-hmm. or you feel as though you cannot trust men because of, you know, some, something that may have happened. But I think it's beautiful how you both are speaking on it because it's, it's a more like it's focused in a positive direction. And it also goes to show you, in all honesty, at the at the end of the day, like everyone's been through a little bit of something, mm-hmm. but that doesn't define everyone around you, you know. And I think that having a family is a beautiful thing. It's it's a beautiful thing because it can get you through some of the hardest times. Right. So, but the definition of family needs to be broad, right? I think yes. that the definition of family can be you know, your family, your siblings, you know, yes. me mm-hmm. and my sisters have a wonderful relationship. That's something that I value. Yeah. So that is also family to me. Yeah. And I've learned to use, you know, even some of the skills that I use as a mother, I've learned those from being a great sister. Yeah. So I think that you're absolutely correct is that um, just expanding our definition of what mm-hmm. what that looks like. And I think that will also, when you talk about trauma, will also help to maybe heal some of those yeah. traumas because some people who are on the outside of this sort of what looks traditional, um, they are still healing from some yeah. of that trauma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, uh, as we start to wrap this up, um, I would just add that um, I think you hit the nail on the head with the word collaboration. Right. And I think the other word that I would add is sacrifice. Um, you have to be willing to work together. It can't be your show. It can't be what's always what's best for you. It has to be what's best for the group, the community, the village. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that means giving of yourself, sacrificing some of what you might like uh, and for the for the good of the whole. We were talking about that yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, the infection of self-centeredness in our society. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like. Everybody just focus on numero uno, but you can't be happy like that. You can't find peace or happiness in life only worrying about yourself. Because the fact of the matter remains, the fact will always be, you will always be connected to other people. You know what I mean? And and the 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 disposition or the the health of your neighbor is going to eventually come back to affect you. You know what I mean? And so you have to be mindful of that. What you're putting out. We've been talking about this this whole time. What you're putting out into the world. Uh, the quality with which, the integrity with which you handle yourself and you handle things, handle situations, handle business, whatever the case may be, um, that it can't just always be about what's best for you. You have to think about what's best overall. Sometimes you do. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yourself, you think about yourself. You got. Yeah, you have to be season. mindful. Yeah, seasons. Mm-hmm. Indeed, but you, it can't always be that way. Right. You have to. At some, you have to. You have to always be mindful and keep track of, like, what how this will affect the big picture. Mm-hmm. The overall, the whole community. You know what I mean? Uh, that's our episode for today. Thank you so much for coming. You did a wonderful job. We're gonna wrap this thing up for this buzzer goes off. Uh we hope that you had uh, this was insightful. I'm sure that it, I ain't gotta tell you, like, I know you're gonna get something out of this if you watch the whole thing. Uh we wanna leave you as we wrap this up with our desire for you to stay safe, stay blessed, and above all else, stay human. We out.